and I did set it to normal. I remembered. <laughs> I'm very happy with myself. Um, Attaboy. So here on the left, we got Poom, Pickles, Bims, Wargreymon, and Okona. And on the right, we got Idra, Shaggy, LZ Gamer, Glaurong, and Keelax. We are on the Plant Terror map, Garden of Terror again. Seconds. We'll have to see if this one is going to be much shorter than the last one. You know, these games... My experience on this map is they always tend to be the longer games. So, has that been your experience on this map? Uh, I actually like it a lot more after the last change. I don't mind that the games are a bit longer. Now that we have at night the, the mercenary camps still up, I yes. enjoy that map a lot more. The map that I personally hate, and most people tell me that I'm crazy, that's a great map, is Dragonshire. I just <laughs> loathe crazy. this map. Probably I played too much solo queue, and when you play solo queue, then uh, coordination is very tricky, and then the map is just, uh, yeah, it's just a shitstorm. Yeah, uh, I have one that I hate too that people tend to go, why? I, I really can't stand playing Blackheart's Bay. That is my least favorite map. Really? Yeah. That's I, my favorite map. <laughs> see, people <laughs> usually say that. They love that map. I just don't like playing that map. It's very, uh, it's another okay. one of those solo queue maps. It's like, if you don't have someone with you at chess, then you uh, aren't getting it. By the way, we've seen something in the first game already, and I want to point that out again. We have Shaggy and Kilex on Falsehood and Brightwing for Team Snow play, uh, picking up Bribe. So we're going to see this very mobile squad on the ma map again that can just bribe any camp once you have those two stacks up. You just have the Falls that fly in, and then the Brightwing just teleports to him, and you can double Bribe immediately. A little bit of aggro going on here. Ooh, Idris getting a lot of damage on the boom. Cloud getting a leap on it. He does get the early quick kill. Well done to Snowflake, you know, they tried to set up a gank on a Shaggy, Shaggy reposition, well, oh my gosh, Pickle's almost falling as well, the grenade, just that heal coming in at the last yeah. second, so much aggression from Snowflake. Glorong is just a beast on that hero, like, I would hate to play against this guy, he's always where you don't want to have him, right at the front line, jumping in and picking you off, trying to get those stuns in, his combinations are really strong, and you could just see that in the last battle, and he's there again, just waiting for an opportunity, just coming a second too late, but he's roaming the map, and he can set that up on the bottom lane together with Idra and Shaggy on the mid lane, we have the tier as well, and he's going for it, he's going for the Tassada here, and trying to get the stun in, here comes the Primal Grasp, oh, he misses him, thanks to to uh, the dimension shift that we saw from Bim. But yeah, he's he's definitely a very, very strong player to have on your team and great for that roaming. Okay, we are seeing Falstead just sitting top. You know, Falstead's usually like to either have the bright set up top in this composition, and they have that global map that you or map presence you've talked about. So if there's ever a scary team fight going mid or something, Falstead can fly down at any moment. Same with Brightwing, can use that teleport to just assist any ally at any moment. So good positioning base over Snowflake right now. and. Man, they're pushing this bottom lane pretty hard, you know, the, yeah. the ammo's still pretty hard, but Wargamon, he's getting pretty low. One bad grenade and Glaron gets the kill. I have to say that I would not be surprised to see people in the future make sure that they either with picks or bans uh, try to avoid that bright wing and false set combination because it's just going to be so strong getting those knights easy peasy and then just transition to another lane. They can shift lanes, they have the mobility, they can then just send in the knights and have a bit more pushing power in a different lane. It's a great combo to have and I'm really eager to see if that plays out for them. We, I think they actually played Brightwing False said the first game today, right? Yeah, they did. They did, and it was so absolutely amazing. It was great. They are. It's a very good combo. Right now, top lane, you know, just Keelax. You know, this lane is very hard to, to get. You know, top lane, it, it, there's a lot of... It, it's a very it's small lane. lane. Yeah, mid lane we have another battle here, and this time LZ Gamer have been in trouble, moves back, the shield saved him for now. We have Glorong again with his stun combination, look at that, but he himself is suddenly in trouble, and it's a double kill. We have Uther down, and Carrigan too. Killing, oh, sorry, Glorong was so close to escaping there, but in the end, not really moving off. LZ Gamer has to be careful on the other hand, moves back in the last second from the Uther copy, so yeah, well done here. So we're getting a bit apart here, I'm at 423 right now. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get that set, guys. Again, Alpha is Alpha, guys. Uh, we, we, we're going to keep saying that through all the cast for this league, you know, there can be bugs at any moment. You know, it's not the most ideal situation, but we want to bring you this awesome game. Um, so just bear with us as we deal with the technical difficulties. It's actually, interestingly enough, with the replays, it's not really a bug. It's some problem that StarCraft 2 had as well. Replays would run out of sync if you were trying to watch it with a friend, and then Blizzard implemented the uh, function or the feature that you could watch a replay with friends. That completely, of course, negated that. And I guess we're going to have the same for Heroes of the Storm, but right now, with the workaround that we've been using here, that, yeah, that problem is just... It's a common one. We've had that before. Oh, at the top lane! 
Nice Ravage by Glowrun going in, trying to get a kill against Iacona, but Iacona very much so paying attention here and not getting caught off that. I really like that. A lot of map awareness here. Knew that Carrigan was somewhere hiding, waiting for an opportunity, and did not get surprised. Top, CDC Snowflake is taking a nice bottom shaggy. Did get the, uh, the Giants with his bribe, but Knights are also pushing mid as both those Giants do fall. Pickles and Poom, Wargrammon, they're going to try and push this bottom lane as hard as they can. They have the Knights, they're going to absorb a bunch of damage. It's only Shaggy here to defend. Top lane, Glaurong and LZ did get the Knights, but they have a long walk to get down the bottom lane. Ider does show up, gets a good grenade, and is going to force them back away. Well, actually, they're going to kind of tank the damage. The tents hitting her very soon as well. Another thing that the teams are working towards. So push at the bottom. 14 wildfire to the top. We have Snowflake pushing things in. Glorong is about to jump into three against three now on the bottom lane. All the way at the top. It's still the Knights together with Kelex that are starting to push in the wall. Only Iacona there for the defense. And the 10 hits for Itra's team a bit faster. Team Snowflake already having their ultimates. It's Odin, Melstrom, Blink Heal, Judgment, and Shock and Awe, as you would expect. 10 also present for Wildfire now, who pick up Stray for the Vala, Leap for the Barbarian, Archon for the Tacita, Tranquility for Malfurion, and Divine Storm for Uther. So the standard heroic abilities for both teams. You know, it's still kind of a stalemate right now. Uh, this, these maps, you know, we're just now seeing, it's the, I guess, six and a half minute mark. We're just now seeing people start going for the objective. We're seeing uh, Pickles and Poom up here taking the drive. You know, when you have that way of an objective, most people have a gun right now. We just see Glowron get the song on Pickles. He has to come in from behind, but has to be very careful. Does not want to be in a bad position when you get hit by that Divine Storm. Yeah, with Kilax it's more likely that he's going to try and uh, pick heroes off with a shock and awe, then initiate with it or use it within a team fight. I don't think we're going to see too many five versus uh, five man fights just yet. They're going to wait for the later talents for that. We have Team Snowflake actually. What they're doing right now is centering a lot of just having a heartbeat on the lanes and not really a five manning anything just yet. They know that their strength comes a bit later when they have the overdrive on the fall step for the extra damage, when they have the extra abilities here. So they want to wait that out and uh, just roam the map with two heroes. Right now it's LZ Gamer and Glorong. It's basically what we've seen a lot already. And they are. Oh, can they take off the Sonya here? Oh, they get three heroes in Shaggy immediately with a blink and an Idra as well. That should be an easy pick up for them. Yep, there goes Poom, he does fall down, Zim's out a little bit. LZ Gamer going ham on Poom, Pickles coming up from behind, they're trying to chase him here. Don't know if they'll be able to secure the kill, there is that Void Shield and he's going to, uh, Face Shift and he's going to get away. Felix kind of low here, I'm going to get healed up by uh, Brightwing's Blink Kill, and right now it's, it's 5v4. They have to be careful, Pickles can't be cut off guard. Kilex actually really killed Wargreymon. Wargreymon just barely escaped in the last second, so a good job by Kilex there as well. But you can really see how that mobility with the Falstead, with the Brightwing, comes into play for Snowflake now. That's the danger that you have to face when you're on Team Wildfire. You have a solid composition, but you need to somehow be able to predict those moves and then be in a yeah, group up for a team fight once that Snowflake tries to engage. We you see that Snowflakes does have the oh, 100 seeds now, so if they wanted to take the Plant Terror, which more than likely they wouldn't, you don't usually take that until like 15, 20 minutes into the game, um, but they do have that option now. One of the things that's also becoming or starting to become a bigger of an issue is the damage output of Wildfire. They don't have it just yet. Oh, they try to 5 man in here. We have the leap. Look at that blink by Shaggy. Amazing dodge on that. That was really, really well done what we saw there. LZ Gamer waiting for an opportunity to maybe turn back and jump in. We had Bala already lose their strafe, so that ultimate is down. Didn't really do anything. Great disengage by Team Snowflake. I really love that, especially the bright wing. Beautiful reaction time from Shaggy. Um, we do see that Idra and Glaurong are going to clean up these giants here. Fort not getting really... actually didn't lose any health. Okay, that was a nice save from them. Um, top of that lane is going to be pushed a bit. Looks like they're just going to back off, though. Wildfire not wanting to engage this yet. They have the, the 13. They have the 13 talent. That's the extra talent that they have. Rewind being picked up by three heroes. So that's one of the main reasons why we see Wildfire disengage. They realize that 13 hit for Snowflake. And they were saying, like, yeah, there's no way we're going to fight you when you have the 13 already. When you have the rewind there, you will be able to dish out so much extra DPS in every single fight. We can't do that. And that's the time when uh, Snowflake just says, like, all right, it's time to push, boys. Let's go and take that top four. And they are moving towards it. They also have the Siege Giants at the bottom. So that's like, it's a lost loss situation for Wildfire. They have to kind of fight here. And they're trying to do that, moving in with the Uther, getting it stun in. Odin form is there. What a great ultimate by Kilex, getting that in immediately. Oh, Glora with the stuns. Look at that rival press. Holy shit. Three heroes <laughs> now. They get the fourth as well. 
What a battle, what a great, great team fight that they had there. Such awesome coordination. And man, it looks like they're gonna get Tassadar as well. Tassadar does fall. Um, now I am at 10-10 right now. Just, uh, just a little bit more safe there. And they're gonna take the four as well. The beautiful team fight, as you described. I mean, the combination, like, Snowflake knows how to utilize each other's heroics. They know how to set up those combinations and they play that to each other's strength. That was a beautiful team fight in Snowflake. That was great. I mean, especially the rebind coming into play. That last stun combo that we have from Glorun caught three heroes. He was the setup for the fall stat too. The ultimate with the shock and all that we saw from Killix was absolutely amazing. I think he hit three heroes at the least, maybe even a four. Then the stun combos. And the whole setup, it wasn't only the fight itself, but the setup on the map. What did we see? We saw Falson at the bottom lane, taking them, uh, the, taking the Siege Giant and then jumping to the top. So suddenly, if you are Wildfire, you're confronted with a Siege, Golem, a Siege Giant push at the bottom lane and five heroes pushing in at the top. You need to do something. And they had to engage, they had to fight, they couldn't just wait it out, because the longer they wait, the more they lose at the bottom lane against the Siege Giants. And look at that fort at the bottom lane. One hit and it's gonna be gone. And it's a great spot for uh, for Snowflake to be in now. Snowflake is kind of hidden above them. The only one by the tower is Glowing. We can try and bait them into something. And here they come from the flank from behind. LZ is going to go in. Here they're coming up from the top right. Oh, the Archon mode goes straight hand onto Keylax. But they get caught guard. Not the best ultimate of war from Keylax. The other one is just about to fall. LZ game looks like they go down as well. A close engagement here right now. It is four to three in favor. Oh, Pickles, he's gonna try and get the sun on to Shaggy. Idra's running away as fast as he can. It looks like these three will be able, you know, these three are the most mobile ones. They have the ways out. Um, not the best engagement for Snowflake, you know, Keelax missed, missed his heroic. Um, I think Keelax was really uh, trying to pretend the shot, but again, but what we have there, we have a push with the Knights at the top. That's exactly the split pushing that we were talking about earlier, having with the bribe abilities and the mobility on the map. Every time one camp pushing in while they engage in a battle. But you're completely right with what you just said. Kilex missed his ultimate completely. I think he was really anticipating a move back by Wildfire into the ultimate and it just misjudged the position. Poom here trying to clear up this wave. A lot of minions here. Finally, he's going to get rid of the Wizard from the Knights. He does fall finally. Um, they're going to camp the Giants as well. It's a big backdoor push. So, as you said, you know. Stuff like did technically lose that fight, but the black backdoor push did a lot of damage to that wall, and you know things aren't as bad as you would normally think for them. So we have the camps now taken. It's level 16 versus 17, as you just pointed out. The uh, kills 9 to 3 in favor of Snowflake. In general, I like their bad their team fights, their five man fights so far more. Even though we had that small problem with the coordination in the last game or in the last fight, but it's just the TPS that they have in total. It's also just so much better than what we see for Team Wildfire. And we've been talking about that problem when we saw the team combos. And it's going to be difficult to get that damage, and especially if they are able to somehow take down Vala early on in the game. She's the main DPS still for Team Wildfire, but she's at 15,000. And we have four heroes on Team Snowflake that easily match their damage or even exceed it. They, they, they just have such a well-rounded comp. They know how to handle their pick ban phase. They, they know what heroes they need to get for the combination. And we see, I mean, this is almost the exact same. Who did LZ Gamer play in that first match? Do you remember? Uh, no, sorry. It was, was it Barbarian? This I, might, I don't remember. I don't remember. I know it's four of the same heroes from that game. You know, they're able to manipulate the pick bands to get the comps they want. And as we've seen you know, twice now, they know how to play this comp well. They are very good at, you know, executing this, you know, these four heroes are specifically com combined together. By the way, did you see the setup for that uh, uh, push again? They were thinking about pushing uh, at the top with five, and they had another siege giant uh, push down at the bottom. Again, the same setup, and now the entire team wildfire converged to the bottom, and what happens? It's just like Snowflake saying, Oh, look at that, a free fort, thank you, it's Christmas already. They move in, try to go for it, and the first thing that happens is that wildfire rushes back. Snowflake doesn't even realize that they are up with five heroes against two, or they would have probably stayed even a bit longer. Now it's a five versus five with LC Gamer already on half HP. But just the idea behind it, pushing while we have a mercenary push on another lane, is what I absolutely love here. Ooh, looks like LC might get caught a little off. He might actually die here. He's so gonna go ahead and ult. Trying to just keep Shaggy coming for the heal. Helix going for the ult. Nice Uther Stone from Pickles hitting everybody. Glowrong is so low, but the heals are so strong. And wow, Snowflake. Gonna come out on top. 
crazy. Like they lose everything here, and especially Helix. I mean, we've been we've been talking about him missing the ultimate in the last fight, but this one hit home hard. Like he did so much damage, and then Idra basically Idra just firing down the same lane that uh, Kilex was using with his shock and all. Once that he hits the Odin, and that dropped three heroes right there. Now it's one hero up against three, and they are going to take that board. It's that team combo that we have that really just goes in. That It's so much DPS. And let's just be frank, the problem that Wildfire is running here, they do not have the DPS. They they don't match that. Like, they are not even close to matching the DPS. Even with the quote-unquote ideal engagement, they're still just not able to come out on top. I mean, we saw the fight earlier where they ended up winning it. It was still just barely where they came out on top, and that was with the ideal engagement. And what Snowflake did can be risky. It worked out really well for them because of the position that they had, but a lot of teams in that position would have probably tried to play it safe and say like, all right, let him die. Just let LZ Gamer die. We are not sure if we can really take this. He's already uh, low. I'm not quite sure if we can survive this battle and would have just moved back. But they, uh, I don't know how much was used on LZ Gamer already, how many of the abilities were down. Maybe that was one of the reasons why they triggered the ability and said like, okay, listen, the abilities are down. We can move in right now. But I can see a lot of teams that would have just said, okay, let him die and we creep move at the boards and then make sure that we fight a fight. Yeah, we have the game going down there. There's the straight from Barlow's here. We're going to trade on to him. Uh, okay, old from uh, Keelax. Only going to hit one person with it. And suddenly it's one for one. Pickle's trying to go hammer on Keelax. He's very low. Uther's going to fall. Two for one right now in favor of Snowflake. Idris full health right now. Hasn't used his Odin. This is looking bad right now. Yeah, it's looking really, really bad. With the Odin form, he can drop another 40 points. So they could actually just try and core it. Two heroes are down. They have the Knights pushing in. It was still at his ultimate ability up. They have four heroes. Then he could have tried to move in against that. We have only three heroes alive for the team. Once is uh, Vala, who's very, very squishy. Ultimate is down for her. We have Tranquility still up, but the Leap has been used. They decide to go for the camps instead, play the safe. There are so many camps on the map now, it makes a lot of sense for them to actually go for that. And uh, keep in mind, they have another push at the bottom against them that they have to stop too. So, I guess scoring it would have been risking too much. You can take all the camps now and stop the push to the bottom, and you will be in a great spot with level 20 easily reached, whereas we see Wildfire only on 18. Well, I mean, they already took in the fort, so or the keep actually, so... I guess they could have tried sneaking in one more tomb, but you're completely right. I mean, there's so many camps. They had the, the knights pushing bottom. They had to go back for that. You know, they had the lead. It's 15 kills to 6. Yeah. It's level 20 to 18. Play the safe game right now. Get camps. Let's regroup and let's win another team fight. And the thing is, like, with them having 20 versus 18, they know that if they want to fight on 20, they can. There's no way for Wildfire to be this fast and gathering up experience that they can just close a two-level gap. That's just not going to happen. And in regards to the uh, 20 talents, we have now Big Red Button, uh, the Odin uh, um, the Odin talent for the Tykers, Maelstrom, Omega Storm for Kerrigan, we have the uh, Blink Heal improvement for Brightwing, we see the Blast of all, and only for Tyrael, the Resurgence of the Storm, as you would expect. They can fight with those 20s if they want to. And we have Wildfire trying to set up a bit of a gank there, trying to blindside them. But the next battle is gonna is, has a very good chance of deciding that game. And I like the position of Snowflake a lot. Unless they catch Keelax or Shaggy off guard, I don't think this is gonna go well. Oh, Kuhn misses the pull. Doesn't get to grab the Idra. That's not the perfect setup. There's a problem on the Kuhn. That would be great. Instantly reacting to all the gamer and wow, the combination from Snowflake. They are just decimating every study. Looks like Bims might end up living. Tyrion's gonna chase, but the rest of them are just gonna push mid. You know, it's it's five versus one right now. Yeah, that in general, like, this entire team comp didn't work out for them. We've been talking a lot about the sustain and the heals. Just on a side note, the heal of Brightwing alone is at 44,000. And that is more heal than Malfurion, um, yeah, than either Malfurion or Uther has done. Uh, yeah, five heroes down right now. That's just, no way. It's just like they don't have the DPS. The, the Odin form in there just doing so much. The shock and awe that we see from Keelex together with his boomerang. Then we have the Kerrigan always with the stuns here. Chlorong has played an absolutely amazing game. And that's, of course, then an easy finish for them now that they have wiped the entire Red opponent's team and they just take it. Yeah, I mean, I want to play something that good that LZ Gamer did there at the end. He delayed the Tassadar from going back. More than likely, the Tassadar was not going to be able to hold against that push. But him chasing him alone, I think his four teammates pushed them in and making sure Tassadar Storms weren't able to help clear up mi uh, minions there that were pushing the tower or the, the palace. I mean, really good play from him. Snowflake playing really well overall. I mean, they're looking so.